Matthew chapter number 11. If you look with me once you turn there. Matthew chapter number 11. We're going to begin reading at verse number 28. Matthew 11, verse number 28. All right, Bibles have stopped turning. I like hearing Bibles turn. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. I may believe that rest is a good thing in these days. We're not talking about laying down and taking a nap. We're talking about having a rest in Christ. Of course, them naps aren't bad either. Hallelujah. The Bible says in verse 30, For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I want to preach a few moments on a thought the Lord gave me, and I really feel like that it is definitely something that we all ought to look at. But I want to preach tonight on the thought of being or this morning, of being yoked to the Master. Being yoked to the Master. Think about being yoked to Christ and what that means. Let's bow together and pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to preach your word this morning. Thank you for the time of study. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing by the choir, the trio this morning, Lord. Thank you for letting us be reminded how much you do love us. God, I pray now that you bless and touch and have your will and have your way in this time together. We ask it in Christ's name. And all God's people said, all God's people said, everybody say hallelujah. Everybody say amen. Everybody say glory to God. You can be seated. I like that, don't you? This morning we want to ask yourself a question. Who are you hooked up with? What are you hooked up with? What is it that in your life you are attached to and what is holding your life? The yoke here in the Word of God would have been in God's Word where two oxen would have been yoked together and they would have been plowing together and pulling together. The yoke here, of course, in the Word of God would have been how these oxen were to serve their master. I looked up this word yoke and began to do a little study on the word and I found this to be interesting. A spiritual yoke has a strong hold on the progress of your life. A spiritual yoke has a strong hold on the progress of your life. Friend, do you realize the things you're attached to and the things you are holding on to and the things that have you bound are the very things that either help the progress of your life or hold back the progress of your life as a child of God. All of us are to be yoked to the Master. All of us are to be yoked to Christ. This morning so many people have a yoke around their neck but I'm afraid they're yoked with the wrong helper. They're yoked with the wrong one. They're yoked with the wrong thing. And so this morning for a little while, with the help of God, I want to talk to you a little bit about the yoke of the master. First of all, I want to preach a little bit about the message in the yoke. The message in the yoke. And I want you to think about this. If you read our text verse, and my text verse would be verse 30. The Bible says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want to say real quickly that the Christian life does not have an easy button. The Christian life does not have a button where you can hit and everything will be easy. So if Jesus simply meant that the Christian life is easy and burdenless, uh, if that's the case, uh, then that wouldn't line up with Scripture. Because we all know in this life we're going to have tribulation. In this life we're going to have trouble. In this life we're going to have trials. So certainly Jesus wouldn't say it. If you're a child of God, everything is easy peasy. That's not what he meant. 
That is not what he was talking about. And if you've been saved any length of time, I promise you, you know this. You know if you've been saved any length of time at all, that tribulations are going to come in your life. You know that if you've been saved any length of all. I had a church member talking to me earlier and was talking about some of the things they're going through. And they've been up during the night and, and it's been difficult and things people are going through. And we were talking about that. And here's what I said to them. I said to them, the people you know that are struggling really bad need you right now even in the middle of your tribulation and in the middle of your trial. They need you to stay strong and they need you to stay with God because friend if we don't have the Lord we don't have anything else and we've got to stay strong with God amen there's a message in the yoke you say well preacher if it's not the, the message of the Christian life is easy I'm going to tell you right now uh, the Christian life's not for wimps the Christian life is for those that have got some intestinal fortitude for those that are strong for those that can live going upstream, for those, especially in this day and time, that will take a firm stand for Christ and a strong stand for Christ. I was watching his brother C.T. went up, and I, and I have to be honest with you, I envied them a lot. And they were up there in Washington and with Brother Ralph and others, and they were sitting there as the president gave his speech. But he said as they were leaving that place, they were called every name in the book. They were cussed out. They were called every name. They said, literally, you feared for your life when they were walking by protesters. And you know what a lot of that's about? A lot of that's about we hate God, we hate America, we hate it all. Amen. And I'm telling you, uh, the Christian life, is anybody listening? It's not, can I get an amen? It's not easy. It's not easy. It does not mean that we're not going to have tribulations. No, that's not what the Lord is talking about. But once it, what is God talking about then? What does Jesus mean when he says, my yoke is easy? Here it is. Being yoked to Christ is a whole lot easier than being yoked to sin. Being yoked to Christ is a whole lot easier than being yoked uh, to the devil. Being yoked to Christ is a whole lot easier uh, than being yoked. Well, listen, my worst day, somebody help you, Pastor. My worst day serving God is better than the best day I ever had living in sin and living away from God and not living for the Lord. There is a message in the yoke. There is a message in the yoke. You see, sin brings burdens that the yoke of Christ does not. The yoke of sin is much heavier than the yoke of Christ. Amen? Some of you know what I'm talking about when you were living in sin. You didn't realize it then. You didn't realize then just how much sin and the yoke of sin and the bondage of sin held you back in your life. You didn't realize what it was doing to you. I tell you what, until Brother, uh, Brother Paquette, until the sun set me free, until the shackles came off of my life, I thought I was doing my own thing. I thought I was running my own thing. I thought I had it all in control. I found out that I wasn't nothing but a puppet on the string of the devil. But thank God that day the whole Holy Ghost cut the string. Amen. And I'm glad now the Holy Ghost is what helps me to live my life. Boy, I appreciate it. Y'all helping me. Listen now. The yoke of sin is much heavier than the yoke of Christ. Here's what God said to Israel when he delivered them from the bondage of Egypt. Leviticus 26, 13, he said, I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt that you should not be their bondman. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. They were in the slime pits and the mud. The, can I say it like this? The monk and the mire. God sent a deliverer. By the way, that deliverer was Moses, but they got out by the blood. Amen. That deliverer was Moses, but they got out by the blood that was on the doorpost, that was on the lintel. They got out by the blood. How? Because God broke the yoke of their bondage. You know why people can't quit drugs? You know why people can't quit alcohol? You know what's amazing to me? Everybody that tries to justify alcohol are usually people that struggle with alcohol. 
Because they can't let go of it. And you know why they can't let go of it? They're yoked to it. They're yoked to it. It has a hold on their life, Brother David. They cannot, I like having you on the front. They cannot, they cannot let go of that yoke. That yoke has been bound. How many of you remember today? Lord, we might have to have church right here. We might have to stop about five minutes and shout a while. How many of you remember the day when you were yoked by something in your life and you couldn't get away from it and you couldn't handle it and then all of a sudden God came by your way and God set you free and God delivered you and He broke the yoke in your life. Amen. I want to say this to you. There's a message in the yoke. I want to ask you a question again. Who are you yoked to and who's your helper? Who's your helper? The message in the yoke, second of all, there's a mistake made about the yoke. Say, preacher, what do you mean by that? Satan will try to convince you that living for Christ is too hard. Matter of fact, he started that stuff in the Garden of Eden, did he not? You know what he said to God? You know what basically he said to Eve in the Garden of Eden? And I'm going to paraphrase this. God's holding out on you. Boy, there's a whole lot of stuff on that tree you are to taste. But God don't want you to taste it. He's holding out on you. You are missing out. How many young people sitting in this building right now, raised in a Christian home, have not had the devil come by you somewhere or another and say, boy, you are missing out because you're raised in a Christian home. How many of you right now in this building have had the devil come by your life when your friends get their new BMW or your friends get a bigger job and they don't go to church and they don't serve God and they don't tithe and they don't give to missions and you see them have something and you look at that and the devil says, hey, look what you're missing out on because you don't, because you serve God. I got news for you. If you're yoked to the master, you're not missing out on a thing. Amen. Lord, I'm about ready to shout and run on my own preaching. If you're yoked to the Son of God, you're not missing out on a thing. Hey, God blesses us here, but our eternal rewards are much better than this. I saw Brother Jerry walk in a while ago. Bless his heart, holding his hand up. And he sat back there holding his head up with his hand because his head won't stay up. Lou Derrick's disease, just destroying his muscles in his body. You listen to me. His precious little wife died just a couple of days ago. Where's he at this morning? He's in God's house. Having to hold his head up. Having to, some of y'all can't hold your head up. Ain't nothing wrong with your neck. He's in the house of God. Been on the mission field many times. Brother Lippert, many times, that, let, that little wife of his, and he'd born on the mission field their own dime, reaching kids for Christ. Amen. He got Lou Gehrig's disease. His wife got Alzheimer's. She died. He's got that disease. It's killing him. You don't think the devil every now and wants to whisper? Amen. He would never let you know it. But I promise you, every now and then the devil will slide by, and the devil, when he slides by, will say, So this is what you get for serving God. You ought to be yoked to something else. Friend, I'm telling you what, I wouldn't trade all the wealth of the world, all the stuff of the world. Hey, I'm telling you, I wouldn't. You know why? Because this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. It gets better beyond the blue. Thank God it gets better for the road. message of the yoke but there's a mistake if you're not careful the yoke you get to thinking well I mean listen guys I understand this world and, and I got a message I'm going to help y'all with lately it's not ready yet but this world wants you to believe that you are Christian young people are missing out on all the fun y'all know what I'm talking about right you got friends that push that mess on you you know what I'm talking about they're pushers they try their best to say, boy, you could have so much fun if you didn't, if your mom and daddy wasn't so, oh, your mom and daddy, they just so hard on you and you can't be out past this time. You can't do this. You can't do that. And because you can't do that, you're missing out. You ought to look at them sometimes and say, hey, I'm yoked to the master. Amen. They won't understand it. Then you can explain. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Does anybody listen to the pastor? 
Hey, listen, listen. I, I'm talking about, I'm talking about there's not just a message, but there is a mistake that many people make. Listen, here's what the truth is about being yoked to something besides Christ. Good understanding giveth favor, Proverbs 13, 15. But the way of transgressors is hard. Brother Clark, I put this down right here in my notes. I'm going to read it right as I put it down when God put this thought in my heart. No one regrets living for Jesus, but many have regretted living in sin. I've never had anybody come to me and, I, Lord, I feel like preaching now. I've never had anybody come to me in all the years I've been in the ministry and say, Preacher, worst mistake I ever made was living for Jesus. But I've had a lot of people come into my office here, my office in the other building, my office in Burlington, dial my phone because sin has so had them bound. Sin has so had them yoked. Don't you pinch it, baby. You stay with me. Sin has so had, stay with you, all right. Sin has so had them bound. The mistake is, is when we let the devil tell us that if we were yoked to something else, we'd be better off. Can I just tell all of that? I want everybody to understand. Everybody look up here at me. I am not depressed nor discouraged during this time. I take it back. I am not depressed, sometimes discouraged during this time. When I see a lot of empty seats that ought to have people in them, I understand. I under, y'all know. I understand. But if you can go eat, go to Walmart, lay out like a water moccasin on the beach, you can go to church. We found out the other night, evidently, the only place that you can get COVID is a Republican National Convention. <laughs> Two people got it in Charlotte. I listened on the news station. You would think it was the greatest pandemic in the world. And, oh, my Lord, everybody's going to die that was here. Two people tested positive for it. And they weren't even sick. 50,000 marched on Washington the other day. And it's okay what they did. Uh, and they were, they were uh, commemorating Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King really did want peace. He didn't want all this burned down stuff and all this bunch of garbage. He really did want peace. He wanted equality for people, but he wanted peace. Not this kind of junk. This, this stuff today is communism and Satanism is all it is. Amen. But you ain't nobody getting sick. Oh, you wait. Trump had that outdoor thing up at the White House. I guarantee the flowers at the White House now have COVID. You say, why, preacher? Here's why. Because people are yoked to a devil and they're yoked to sin and they're yoked to feel. I'd rather be yoked to Christ. Amen. 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 Well, hallelujah. Amen. Brother David, you sit on the first row next week. Praise God, you will. A mistake about the yoke. You over here, Brother Clark over there, and these boys here, they're going to get it one day. They just look a little scared right now. Let me give you real quick the matter of wearing the yoke. Not only do we see the message in the yoke and the mistake can be made about this yoke, what about the matter of wearing the yoke? Is everybody ready to hear a statement? If you're ready to hear a statement, say amen. Yeah. Ready to hear a statement, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen to this. People will see what you're yoked to. People will see what you're yoked to. They don't know what you hooked up with. Uh-huh. Now listen to me. There's some things you've got to be careful about being yoked to in this world. Number one, you've got to be careful about being yoked to unbelievers. Y'all still with me? Let me emphasize. You cannot exclude unbelievers from your life. You got people you work with, you got people you're acquainted with, you've got to be nice to them, share Christ with them, live a Christian life in front of them. You can't just belittle people because they don't know the Lord. There was a day you didn't know the Lord either. But at the same time, 
you can't be yoked with him. Because when you're yoked to something, what that means is, that means when you're yoked to it, you're identified with it. Does anybody got the pastor preaching right, right here? You're identified with what you're yoked to. That's why I can't go sit on the bar stool and witness to somebody. I'm not going to drink alcohol to bar stool. I care nothing about alcohol, period, before I got saved. I could care less about it. I'm crazy enough as it is. I don't need that to help me. I care nothing about it. Nothing about it. But if I was sit on that bar stool, you know what the deal is? I'm yoked to it. You say, oh, no, preacher, you're not because you're not going to do that. All the people know is they see my yoke. They see where I'm at. Right? That's so why you got to be careful. Huh? Yoked with unbelievers. The Bible said, be not equally yoked together with unbelievers. How many believe that's the Bible? Say amen. amen. It's not just about being married. It's about your life. You cannot be yoked together with unbelievers. You young people, you, you young, young adults that think about one day having a, having a spouse getting married, you cannot be yoked together with somebody that's unsaved if you're saved. Even after you may tie the knot and say some words and get married, it still ain't going to work. It's going to be a battle the whole time. There's a whole lot of people say they're Christians and they're not. Right? I always told my daughter when she went to college, I said, look, you make sure, don't you, some of these guys find out you're a Christian, they want you to date them, they'll say anything in the world. Oh yeah, I go to church, I love Jesus. You know they don't love Jesus, amen? They're not even yoked to the right thing. Amen? Number two, watch this. You can't be yoked with bad behavior. Let me explain it. Galatians 5.1. How many of you believe the Word of God explains it better than man? Listen to this. Galatians 5.1. Stand fast. That means take a strong stand. Therefore, in the liberty where Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the water bondage. Yoke. You know what? I don't want to get yoked up. I don't want to get yoked to the bondage of sin after I've been set free by Christ. Am I right about that? Listen to me. If you're saved, or is anybody listening to the preacher? If you're saved by the grace of God, what in the devil do you want to get yoked up with sin again for? That don't make no sense to me. Brother Brady, don't make a lick of sense. I don't make no sense. Why, if God set you free, Brother James, would you want to get yoked again? It makes no sense. Well, preacher, I'll be honest. I, I'm just backslid. And it's not even a New Testament word. It's an Old Testament thing. Israel backslid. I like to just say in the New Testament, you ain't right with God. Well, preacher, I'm, I'm going back to, you ain't got nowhere to go back to. Dog returned to his vomit. You ain't no dog. Amen. You ain't got nothing to go back to. Amen. Am I preaching right? Amen. I've been saved a lot of years. I'll be totally honest with you. I like being yoked to the master. God's been good to me. There's a fellow right now watching us right now, watching online right now, he and his wife, watching online right now, and they better be, right now. He and I yesterday were talking about some things. That, uh, he called me, and we were talking about some things. And we were talking about how good God's been to us and how blessed we are. I'm going to be honest with you, I would never be where I'm at today in my life had it not been for trusting Christ and getting yoked up with Him. That's the truth, man. My wife, because we got right with God, went from driving a green Plymouth Valiant that would smoke the mosquitoes out of every county to an Avalon. That's right. I mean, she gets in that thing. I mean, you know, she, my wife, she's, she's, the older she gets, the more high maintenance she's becoming. She went with me on a trip the other day because I left my camper at home and took her to the Hamptons. Next thing she wanted to go is the Hamptons in New York. Or wherever is it? God's been good to me in my life. Amen. I'm on my yard the other day with a lawnmower that the deacons in this church bought for me 18 years ago. That boy never gave me no trouble. Husk Vaughn never gave me no trouble. It, it's so old that you, you don't even pull the lever and raise it up and down. You got to pull these little pins out. So I just leave it the same all the time as a mow. You know what I'm saying? 
18 years ago. I would have never had that thing 18 years ago if it wasn't hooked up in the master. Yoked to him. Amen. I don't live in no big old house, but I got a home. Yoked to the master. Don't you come to me telling me, oh, it's such a burden to live for God. Get over yourself. God's been 10,000 times better than you. You deserve and you know it. Amen. You think all them athletes, you listen, all them LeBron, all that bunch of crazy athletes right now, we ain't going to play basketball. Then please don't play. I could care less if the ball's inflated or not, to be honest with you. All they got to do inflated with is their ego. You ain't going to battle for no anthem. You, you ain't going to appreciate your country. Go play over there in the China League. Go over there in the North Korea League and play. Maybe they'll be like Wile E. Coyote and put you on one of them missiles and hug you on it and shoot it up in the sky. I never understood why that boy done some of the craziest things he did. That was the craziest fellow, man. That Wile E. Coyote was crazy. I want to look at him sometimes, scream to TV. If it says acne coming on it, stay away from it. A scam. But anyway, let's get back on talking about it. I just love them cartoons. I get on them cartoons just feel the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the old good ones, you know. I ain't talking about them bunch of rangers and all them bunch of flower looking fellows. I'm talking about good old Bugs Bunny, Road Runner, and Marvin. Let's get off of that. Be careful what you yoked to. Be careful who you yoked with. And don't think if you're yoked to the master, it's a hard life. Good chance you ought to go by and ask Brother Jerry. Brother Jerry, do you hate you ever got saved? Do you hate you serving God? Do you hate you live for God? Jerry, all y'all been through late lately, do you, do you hate that you ever got? You don't ask him. He don't slap you upside the head and say, you got to be crazy. Right? Amen. Listen to me. I'm about done. Listen. Yoked with bad behavior. So then there's only one other thing to be yoked to, and I just call this yoked with the blessed Savior. Hmm. Matthew 11, 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest under your soul. You know why you can fill your head at night? You can go to sleep. Unless you're older, and sometimes that's harder, but you can pillow your head at night and go to sleep. It's because you got rest in Christ. You can't be yoked to the world, the devil, sin, drugs, alcohol, illicit uh, actions in people's lives. There's kids and everybody in here, so I'll say it to you. You can't be hooked to all that mess and have any kind of rest. But if you're hooked up with Christ, if you're yoked with him, he said it's easy. He said the burden's light. That's why people are so miserable. Does anybody listen to the pastor? Amen. Stand to your feet, but keep listening to me. Don't you turn me off. Stand to your feet. You close the Bible, don't close your heart. Stand to your feet, listen to me. That's why people are so miserable. That's why they find fault in everybody. Brother Clark, God gave me a thought for a message the other day. I told Mr. Wendy about it, to put it together. Remember when Jesus threw the money changers out of the temple? He threw them out of church? I'm going to preach a message on some things we need to throw out of God's house. Got some thoughts. Got some things we need to throw out. I can tell you what they are. If I did, some of you wouldn't come listen to it. I want you to listen to me. This world is miserable because what it's yoked to not just don't satisfy, but it'll always pull against them. It'll pull, and the yoke is going to hurt when you pull against it. This world's not your friend. There ain't a ball player, athlete that's your friend. Not a one of them. I care not about you. They care about them. 
least in this building, you got folk care about you. 